are very sporting and they predominantly operated on the flat but now uh, they seem to have taken a real keen interest, certainly Richard Thompson, the younger of the Thompsons in, in, in National Hunt. Yeah, people may re might not realise but they have two sets of colours and they're actually steeped in National Hunt racing. So if anybody remembers party politics and the likes, uh, they, they owned party politics and um, so as you might relate the, the red the red and, and blue colours uh, to the flat, um, the red white, white, did, uh, or the red and white, sorry, and the blue hat, um, they have another set of colours that they used to use in the jump uh, race, but they decided since they came up, they, they wanted the Shibley Park colours uh, put on the jumpers uh, this year, or um, um, when, when they came back into it strongly, you know. Um, but they're, um, they're a fantastic bunch of people. Um, they have a guy in charge of them there, um, um, uh, Chris Richardson, he's a, a real gentleman. And I, I just for people that they can't, they just cannot get over the enthusiasm of the Irish people yeah. towards their horses. Mm -hmm. He was standing in the, in the parade ring in Nice, you know, he did not know what way to look. Um, he literally just stood there and, and could not believe what, what he was watching. Well, that was extraordinary that day, Davy. I mean, the reverence that people almost, they were almost, almost like, it was like a pilgrimage to see Envoy Allen. And I mean, you know, the sun was shining that day and his cold was gleaming. I mean, he, he really is, I mean, he is a standout. He's a superstar. Well, he, he, he's good. This is, this is, I wouldn't get too carried away now. He's, this is his toughest uh, test. So it I, is, and Gordon hasn't really, Gordon has been kind of playing it down. He's been quite clever about it as well. I mean, I know somebody said at a recent press day, well, you know, he's the high horse, isn't he? And Gordon says, no, he's not my high horse, he's your high horse. So he's been kind of playing it down. and no, He's basically letting the horse do the talking for him. Yeah, well, we've listed all this before and they've got beaten and things like that. So, yeah. um, He's very much beatable, um, but saying that he's very, very good. So you know it'll take a good one to to, to beat him. So best of luck to him. And the best of luck to you too as well, Davy on And uh, no doubt he'll bring the house down if he was to open the uh, account on day two of the festival. Yeah, that, will be, uh, that will be that will be some occasion. Okay, uh, can anybody beat him, Brian? <laughs> Simple. Even with an outfit like Davy riding in Silman. Uh, <laughs> but uh, time, time Hill is one that would interest me if he won, but I think they're talking about the Albert Barber, but I think he's a really good horse. If I, if I own Time Hill, I'd run him in this, because to me, look, half of these are going to run, but it looks to think so. The Albert Barkley could have been a more difficult race than the Ballymore, because everybody's steering the Ballymore because of Ben Boyan. Exactly, yeah. So uh, there's, there's definitely um, openings here for horses to finish in behind, you know, the first tree. And, and Time Hill, I think he was third time by Alan in the bumper last year. Um, so, you know, he's a pretty smart horse. Uh, so maybe he, like if he runs in this, I think he could be one of the bets in the meeting without the favourite. Yeah, he's not beaten in his uh, three subsequent starts since that uh, third to end by Allen in the bumper last year. And um, obviously, Asterium for launch probably likely to go. Andy for the uh, Supreme Novices. Is there anything else there? That's a sporting John. Any word on this Sporting John? There seems to be a little bit of word that this Sporting John could be something special. Again, he's won his three starts fairly, fairly comfortably. JP Odds him. Fairly comfortably, but probably a bit untested. Um, you mentioned uh, a Syrian for launch probably going for the Supreme. I'd like the big getaway. Now, I don't think he's done anything near what Envoy Allen has done, but he looks a horse who won well last time and looks like he could be an improver with a bit more up his sleeve. It's probably not good enough to take on Envoy Allen. But yeah, an interesting race for commentators. He could have the big getaway and the big breakaway in the same race. Um, Gary. What's your view? Obviously, you know, Envoy Allen sets the standard and, and he, he's, he's probably going to frighten them all off and into, into the Albert Barkley, but is there anything there that you could see, assuming that uh, maybe Envoy Allen doesn't go to his mark, that, that could beat him? Uh, I, I'd struggle to see him getting beaten, Dennis, to be honest, because I think, I know Davey feels he didn't run, run up to his very, very best when he won at Nace last time, but he still won. And, and that's the sign, obviously, of a real good horse. That even when they're not at the top of their game, they can still come up with the goods. But I actually thought the two horses that finished second and third behind him that day—I don't know what the plans are for them—but uh, one of them, Longhouse Poe, is owned by the 
the man who sponsors this, he won it last year with City Island. I wouldn't be shocked if either of them, or maybe even both of them, were to run into a place in this race. Um, that, that looked a well-run race to me at Mace, and even if Envoy Allen was a, was a little bit below his best, I thought the two of them came out of it with plenty of credit, and Longhead's power ran very well at Leopardstown on his next run as well. The, the Mullins horse didn't run his race that day, but I, I still think the two of those are very smart horses indeed. And I wouldn't think they're a million miles off the likes of uh, the big getaway, the big breakaway, or, or Sporting John, but Envoy Allen, he just, he just does what he has to do, that's the way it seems to me. And, his jumping is very, very efficient as well for such a big horse. Um, you can imagine chasing would be his ultimate goal, but he jumps hurdles very, very well, and <coughs> I'd struggle to see him beat, to be honest. Yeah, racing needs a, it, its superstars, uh, Gavin, and he is, you know, he's up there already, but, uh, you know, if he was to win in Cheltenham, obviously, that will, uh, again, for a second year in a row, that would uh, further, I suppose, enhance his reputation. Um, any, anything you can see get even closer. I was going to say he's the Jordan Henderson of racing, but I'm only joking. Um, there's three good things on the Wednesday. Uh, generally, Wednesday is a great day for punting uh, compared to, say, Friday, particularly. They get their money back on Friday. But um, uh, to me, and by Allen's a good thing. Uh, you can get, I think, see there 11 to 10, NRNB, no, 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 no bet. There's even a little bit bigger out there. Um, there's a lot of talk lately that people are going to oppose him and oppose him. Great. Uh, he could be 6-4, to 7-4 four, to four on the day. Um, and if he is, just make sure you put him into a load of multiples. He's won his four bumpers. He's won his three hurdle races. He never wins by very far. He's kind of a bit idle. Uh, even the day in Navin, it wasn't a good bumper. And he only wins a length or two. Uh, it was a good bumper in Leopards and he wins by a length. He just... They're the kind of horse that lasts forever, the ones that don't win. See what Paisley Park is doing. It doesn't take a lot out of them. Whereas Mastermind that goes and wins the champion chase by 20 lengths and kills them, you know? Um, so I'd be all yeah, over in by Just a, a, As a punter, and you mentioned the fact that he might, the bookies might want to take him on. If you were going to do roll-up multiples, would you prefer to let the, the bet stand at SP at this stage rather than taking the price? Or do you think you're better off taking the price now? It depends who it's with. Um, there is 11 to 8 out there, in or NB, I think that's that's good enough value. Uh, but I think he could be 6 to 4 on the day, so you're splitting hairs a little bit. Well, he's actually 2 eight. to 1 at the moment, Rob. You might tell us about that. But yeah, Rob is sticking his neck out here now for um, just by Alan to win yeah, the value. Two things I'd say if you're doing multiples, you probably want to wait for the week because all the bookies are going to go best odds guaranteed, so yeah. you're probably better off waiting till Tuesday morning or something like that. Um, just for Gary, just comparing him to Sam Crow as a novice, will he be a better novice in your opinion? Uh, not as flashy maybe as Sam Crow, I wouldn't have said. Um, but I think, the, you know, the, the form, I think his form stacks up every bit as well as Sam Crow's did. I, I'd be happy enough to row him with him on what I've seen. Okay, well, Sam Crow went off 8-11 to 11 and he won the Ballymore. Um, and as you said, we're going to go 2-1 to one, um, all day tomorrow, well, tonight and all day tomorrow. He's the banker of the week, but I suppose, as Gavin said, it's either do or die, shit or bust in the Wednesday. So, two to one, you might get in the day, maybe you won't, but you'll get it tomorrow with us. These are single prices only, I take it, Rob. Go into the first shop in a suit, go into the second one in a track suit, <laughs> go into the third one with a baseball cap on forward, and the fourth one baseball cap backwards, and have 400 quid in by Allen at two to one. And pay for your week. Pay for your baseball caps. Um, right, the Queen Mother Champion Chase, Gary, just, um, it has the makings of the race of the festival, there's no question or doubt about that, assuming all, all three principles stand their ground. Altior has won the race for the last two years, and you'd have to think he's a, a deserving 50 to 8 favourite, Gary. Uh, probably just about, Dennis, yeah, I suppose a horse that's only lost once in, in his career over fences, it's a hell of a record, and uh, he did I suppose he showed his well-being when he won at Newbury last time. He didn't impress everyone that day, but I think that's the type of horse he is. He's, he's never the flashy type. And it might just be the case that no matter what he runs against, whether it's Defi de Soy and Shaq and Bersois, he could be run against here, or a few 120 rated horses, he'd beat them all the same. I don't know, I just, I think he's taking on two horses here that are probably just a, a little bit better than what he's run against the last couple of years. I know he's run against very good horses like Min, but I think Defi Desoy in particular uh, is going to make life really tough for him. 
um, up here again, even at Newby last time, he, he just gives his fences a little bit more air than ideal. And I think his class for a long, long time is, has maybe got him out of it. Do you, do you think he, he gives them more air than he used to? Possibly. He, the, he always did it a touch, but it would appear to me that he just... Hang the only thing is those newbie fences, I always think I'm going to use large yeah. rim red they're, they're real kind of stary fences, aren't they? Uh, Upright. Um, the couple of fences up the straight that you're looking head on, they look, they actually run perfect, but when you look back, it, it looks like coming off Beecher Brook, looking at them, it's a visual thing. Um, I think it's just sort of a straight line looking down, but I agree with both. He, he, he does seem to hang a little bit, but at the same time, I'd love if one of these Genius has done the fractions on, on the way he quickens. He seems to be beaten everywhere. And his the last day he looked beaten all ends up, David, didn't he? Yeah, but his last two furlongs are obviously his fastest. And then the one day that he was beaten, you know, that it was, he was put to the pin his colour, his last two furlongs, his, them furlongs would, would have been his slowest, you know, so I know over distant trip and everything like that, but I'm just a little bit worried. And I, it's, it's often the case that when a horse is unbeaten on his career and he meets a horse that is capable of beating him, he, he doesn't know what to do. Um, the benefit of that is it has happened before and he's come back and won since. That was important for him to come I back. I would think that would, could have been the most, if he wins a champion chase, that's the winning of it, is the run in between. But at the same time, I don't think he's ever beaten anything like these two. And in fairness to Davy, Nicky uh, basically decided to go back to doing what he thought he knows best as well. Sure, wasn't it worth to try? And you know, like the he who plays the. There's no shame in getting beaten by surname. Plays the young man over a longer trip. Um, I think the trip. Uh, there was no shame in getting beaten over the trip. I'd say. Um, I, I couldn't imagine Moscow Fly or whatever horses have done that. Edward and Blue and all them could have. I think every one of them may have done the same. Um, um, so, but that's it, yeah, he, but uh, the only thing, I, I'm definitely a Soy fan, I, I, I love the horse, I've loved him since the first day I saw him, and uh, I just, my worry for Altior is, okay, he, he may be one of them, but whether, whether he beat the two of them combined, and for that reason I think there could be a finisher in the race, and it could be uh, Sue Royal, who was very much on the bright jump in the second last, even to the last, last year, he could be a horse that could run into a place at a big price. But obviously if you had the choice between the three, you'd, 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 you'd plump for Deffy, would you? I think so, yeah. I just think his young legs, I think he stayed, he won around over the course last year, over two and a half, and, um, you know, he's he's a triumphant winner over two miles. He's He's got everything, really. Um, he's, he's the one. Um, the only worry is then that Shep and Pushwar beat him in Punchestown. Yeah. Um, so then, you know, um, if you're going on farm alone, Shaq and Pursois, but I just, I just like Benny, or I like, um, um, Deffy Desoy. Desoy. Um, you obviously won this race, Andy, um, what's your view on the actual race? I mean, obviously, you know, Davy has more or less gone through all the, all, all the principles there, and of the three, what, what, what would you like to be on? Um, I wouldn't go against Davy. I would love Deffy Desai. I'd love Shaq, uh, all three of them, but they're absolutely, this is a spectacular race. You know, you get ordinary renewals of a champion chase, but this is three absolute superstars. Any one of them would be uh, merited winners. I'm, I'm going to go against Daltier, you know, for all, for everything he's done. I don't think the jumping is as slick as it was. And as Gary pointed out, these two might be better than, better than anything he's come up against before. And they are absolutely brilliant to jump, the two of them. They have huge amount of scope and they're so fast. Like, Deffy Desai looks like an absolute dream to ride. Barry Geraghty never has to move a muscle on him. He's just pinging, pinging, pinging. And Champion Chase is all about jumping. And I think uh, Altino might get caught out. Yeah, Brian, it, it, it's probably the best spectacle of the whole festival to see these chasers gone, you know, hell for leather over, over two miles. There's no, there's, there's no hiding place. It's, it's, it's just from gun to tape. And, uh, you know, when you've got three animals as good as these, it's just, it's a race probably worth the admission money alone on the day. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's a great race. Um, no doubt about that. It's, it's very hard to call. Uh, Definitely, Desoy has a real finishing kick. 
which he so uses as well. And so, so does Altior, so I'm thinking maybe Townend will have to go hell for leather, use his jump and try and run the finish out of the other two. That's going to be difficult now, I'd say. Uh, but his, I thought his performance at Leperstown was really, really good. Now, to, to beat Min, uh, you know, it was sort of a lot of people fancied Min before that race, uh, and he beat him well, beat him fair and square. And to have and to do it, they really didn't take any prisoners down the down the back either. Yeah. You know, the, his jumping was phenomenal. Um, they, he did look like he was tired when he finished, but maybe he was tired because they just went so quick, and they, you know, they. They were legless near the end. Now, that's probably what he's going to have to do again in, in Cheltenham if he's to win. Whether it's good enough to, to win it or not, I don't know. But um, I wouldn't rule out Altior. I think people underestimate Altior a bit. I think he's a really he's up there with some of the best we've seen. And he he just keeps on winning, and you have to respect the horse that keeps on winning. Yeah, you have to be a great horse to win back-to-back -back champion chases, and he has done that. Gavin, what's your view on the race in terms of? I'd say it'll be the best four minutes you'll have in March. Um, <laughs> But as regards having a bet, the, uh, uh, you might take for it anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I just think in terms of having a bet, it's trap one, trap two, trap three, above in Cheltenham Park. It's it's too hard to choose. Um, Altior is twenty from twenty over two miles to two two. The league of was two five and heavy. So he's twenty from twenty. He's one of the last four Cheltenham festivals. He won a brilliant Supreme where Boober Dare was third. He wins the arc and he's won two champion chases. So you'd imagine he should be twos on. Normal to drop that. You can back it literally two to one. Uh, Deffy decided the last day in Ascot was a joke of a race. It just turned into a mild sprint. The two mile five handicap ch chase that day, um, each furlong was run as quick as their race. So just, I love Deffy Desai and I usually back him, but I just think the last day's performance was just. I wouldn't take that literally. It's a race to watch really, isn't it? It's yeah. Would that, would that not increase his chances that it would run so slow and he was still able to do? Yeah, he went against Undersoul and Undersoul was slow the last two fences. He winged him and it was just over. I think Patrick Mullins is going to ride Undersoul and I can't understand why they don't do what they've done the last two Punchetown Festival switches. Go as hard as he can with Undersoul the whole way and I think Patrick's going to do that. I think Undersoul is going to run a huge race. He'd probably finish fourth. But I could see him on a big race. I won't back him, but I think they're going to ride him properly this time, which they didn't the last couple of times at Cheltenham. But I could see Undersoul, even though he's he's old. I'd say he could definitely. If there is a market without three, I'd be backing Undersoul. Is it? Yeah. It is worth remembering he was only beaten the neck by uh, by Deffy in the Tingle Creek or Creek. Yeah, Tingle Creek. Like he beat a punch down the last couple of years. He beat Min and he beat Dooman. And again, they just went, he just has one gear, and I love him to do that with Undersoul. He's a different horse altogether, so I'd say Patrick is going to do that this time. Yeah, it's, it's promised to be some spectacle, Rob. Yeah. Where, where will your money be? Yeah, it's probably a tough call to, to even know what's going to go off favour because they're going to come for one of these on the day. Um, like it's a bookmaker's dream because, let's say, every bookmaker is going to win with this race. Like the chances are one of the big three are probably going to fall short um, and just because he's been beaten on the soul and we don't really know if on the soul is trained on because as Gav said Ascot was a farce and um, Paul Townham probably didn't go as fast as he should the Tingle Creek was a great race but we're, we're basing that on on two runs that Daffy the soil is, is maybe the best in England and the worry I have with Altior is while he's been winning and he's been looking in trouble Turn it in, if he's two or three lengths behind Jack and Bourgeois, it's probably the best horse that he's ever had to, to make proper ground on. Like the way they talk about Jack and Bourgeois is very similar to the way they used to talk about Duvan. They think this lad is, is as good as they've had. Um, and just simple things like Ver Ruby say, the way he lands, he, he lands running over a fence, which is stuff that they used to, to, to talk about Duvan. It's, they're sort of in awe of him. They actually did that on a race in TV one night, Ruby does a road to Cheltenham thing, and they did a slow-mo of him coming at second last against Min, and he took off behind him, and he landed on the ground before him, and Min jumped the fence perfect. So it's just, it's amazing. He's definitely the best jumper in the race. Yeah, yeah. Just because of that, um, maybe, listen, we could be saying at uh, 20 to 4, Wednesday week, 
How was LTR 2 to 1? As Gav said, 20 from 20 over two miles. He's an incredible horse. Never did we think he'd be 15 days for the champion chase, but he's just shown signs that he's beatable. He was beaten in Ascot. And just with Chak and Pursois, he just might. If he's turned in and he's under pressure and Chak and Pursois is two or three lengths ahead of him, he just might be able to go back. Well, that's the great thing about racing is the uncertainty of it. Dave, Dave you just be, we'll be going to the break shortly, but uh, just obviously World of Tiger Roll. I mean, you know, obviously you know, Keith, Keith will ride him in, 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 in the cross country chase, but like, I mean, there are horses in, you know, of a lifetime, but Tiger Roll is certainly up there. I mean, to have won back to back Grand Nationals is one thing, and it's an incredible achievement. He's also won four times at the Cheltenham Festival, he's just something else. He's an extraordinary horse, uh, he really is. Um, just a pleasure to be have anything to do with him. I'm lucky enough um, to ride him four times. I think I wrote one and three on him. And um, yeah, um, I suppose most of the credit has to go to all the credit has to go to God, you know, really. And he's the bottom to, to do what he does with him again this, you know. And then again, he took him for a, a spin last week off to Cheltenham. Like, you just don't, do, people don't, you don't do that. And all them things. The horse knows that the, 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 he's flicking a switch on him and he's just starting to come to himself now and he really is only just coming to himself. Um, Keith was extremely happy with him in, in, in Navin but I suppose the only worry is, is the cross country race is getting better and the ground is going to be softer than he, ever, than he has ever uh, encountered. So um, you have to uh, make sure you, your head rules your heart if you're one. He's going to be quite short I'd say so you yeah. know. I don't know, but he really is a fantastic horse. Like, if he runs anywhere up to his mark, I mean, there's, you can't see anything really to take him on here. I mean, Easy's Land is, like, you know, won the cross country chase at, at Cheltenham in December, but was out Sam was third on that occasion, and, like, he, you know, he, he wouldn't be even in the same parish as Tyler Ryan. No, no. Um, uh, they wouldn't even be brought up the same lot. Um, so, um, he, uh, he's, he's a fair horse now and he's definitely bought by JP and you know that I was actually supposed to ride him uh, uh, one of these days uh, before JP bought him so uh, uh, Dave Cotton does think an awful lot of him um, um, but at the same time um, he's no Tiger Roll. No, and, and just, just a quick chat on Tiger Roll, I mean obviously you know him as well as anybody else and um, the training performance that like he's not a big horse he's 15 too and like for what Gordon has managed to achieve with him to be able to have the vision to see that a horse that won a triumph hurdle over two miles would ultimately go on and win multiple grand nationals over four miles plus i mean it took a fair bit of vision and he's he, his, his training performance of tiger roll is one of the great training performances of all time in my view yeah you, there, there should be a movie about him without being smart there should be because um, Who's going to play? Who we'll played David Russell? Yeah. There is already, is there, Gary? I can exclusively reveal <laughs> this. Um, yes, uh, I think there is a, a film about Tiger Roll in the pipeline, which should be hitting the screens in the next couple of months. Pat Shaw. 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 Has nobody spoken to you about this, Davey? Oh. Give him a ring tomorrow. They might, they might be able to call you in. It's nice to talk to the guy who wrote the victory on a couple of occasions in the Grand National. You so. are in it. I saw it today, sir. <laughs> they interviewed you first. <laughs> they obviously did not pay him. He knows why there's a movie. You don't pay yourself now. There's no one else paying him. It's you. The difference. <laughs> he talks so much shit. I just can't remember which interview it was. <laughs> Nobody spoke to me about <laughs> Tiger Road. And you got paid for it as well, I said. <laughs> no, I didn't hear about it. <laughs> um, anyway, it's all systems go, Davey. If he, obviously, this is the stepping stone to, you know, what ultimately would be a bit of immortality to win three Grand Nationals. I mean, I know people are making this argument that the Grand Nationals are a bit easier. That's nonsense, isn't it? I mean, you know, what he has done, what he's managed to do, if he was to go out and win three Grand Nationals, it would be just one of the all-time great sporting achievements, let alone racing achievements. I, I, I've rode in, in, in loads of different types of fences. I, I can guarantee you, Tyler Road would have jumped around at any stage of it, for the simple reason, he, um, he's so clever. He just um, barely does enough, doesn't he? It doesn't, doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what he's jumping. He knows, like, I, I, I don't know um, the horses back then, 
if they would have run, jumped around across country. I, I honestly didn't think um, Tiger Roll would, would jump around across country, um, but he's just so clever. He, he adapts to it, so he, he would have won any. Uh, he would have jumped around any Grand National. I'm confident of that. Um, 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 yeah, the, the story of Lars is just fantastic. He's, he's just a brilliant horse. Um, Gordon didn't want him. He was a sympathy. He was a sympathy um, uh, boy when he when he got him. It was, it's actually quite funny. He wanted he wanted a horse, um, another horse that Willie Mullins got, and uh, Gordon Gordon was quite quite uh, angry over it. And uh, they bought Tiger Roll and gave it to Gordon, and he didn't really want it. Not that he didn't want him, but he wanted a different horse. So he's just he's just a fascinating horse. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's an incredible story, and I mean, it's great to be living through these times. I mean, when, you know. It, it's just extraordinary and please God fingers crossed he, he, he makes it but if he does I mean and you were to go on and win three Grand Nationals it would be one of the great racing achievements of all time I'm sure no doubt okay